Hey everyone, Grant here for the Flame Learning Channel. In this video we'll run through a few workflows using the new Object ID Pass in action. This is new to the Flame 2018 products and has lots of productive potential. Please note that this will only work with 16-bit and 32-bit data passes… so please remember this when using these workflows. If you would like to follow along… Please click the link in the YouTube description to download the media. Alternatively, if you're watching the podcast version of this video, then type the link displayed in your favorite web browser. Import the downloaded media via the Media Hub and load the supplied batch setup using Load and Replace. Here you have a 16 bit action node containing a few geometries in the 3D composite. Double click on the node for its controls and go to a 2-up view with ALT 2. Schematic on the left and Result Viewport on the right. Now the Object IDs is a data pass that could be produced from a 3D application… but you can now produce them from within Action. This allows each geometry to have a specific identification. This is normally represented as a coloured data pass… and each colour represents an object in the 3D scene. To set Action to output an Object IDs pass… select the Result view and go to the Action Output menu. Under the Render Passes Output Selections… scroll the list… and select and enable the Object IDs data pass output. So you can see the scene's objects represented as different solid colours. What's important is that the composite must be 16-bit or higher… And this ensures each object will have a unique colour. Now let's use this Object ID pass in a few workflow scenarios. Ensure the result view is still selected and switch back to the primary comp output. Firstly, a great use of an Object ID pass is to extract a mat from the current composition. It is quite common to build a composite with various images and 3D objects and then have various mats to do isolation work further down the batch flow graph. So swipe back to Batch. Locate the Matchbox node… and drag it into the Batch Schematic. In the File Browser, locate and choose Object Mat. Now connect the Action Composite output into the first input… followed by the Action Object ID data pass into the second input. Double clicking on this tool you can expose its menus… and you can choose which object ID to isolate. You can isolate and combine up to 5 selected objects at a time. Firstly, turn on Object ID Viewing. This will expose the Object ID pass we are using. Now let's say that we want to isolate the head of the robot. So click the Object 1 colour pot to bring up the colour picker. Now before you pick any colour, remember that I said at the beginning of this video that the Object ID pass needs to be at least 16-bit. Ensure you switch the colour picker to 16-bit float point… otherwise you will get unexpected results. Next, click the Pick button… and sample your first colour. Now go ahead and sample the remaining objects that make up the head. The reason why there are a few object IDs to pick… is that each object group or geometry is assigned as a separate ID… therefore you get the different colours. Now by the end of this, you should be using 4 out of the 5 selected objects. To see what you've generated, turn off Object ID Viewing. Now press F4 to cycle to the mat output. You should now have a mat of the robot's head. What is very cool is if you scrub the time bar, you can see that the occlusions are already considered, so no additional mat combinations or roto is required. Any changes in action will automatically feed up the flow graph and update your result. Now that you have a generated mat, you can do additional work on the comp. For example, Swipe back to Batch and drag out a colour correction node. 
Next, take the composite output of Action and feed it into the Colour Correction front input. Secondly, take the blue matte output from the Matchbox node and feed that into the Colour Correction matte input. You don't use the composite output from the Matchbox node because the shader assigns it as a matte. Using the Action Composite output will keep any tagging or colour space management intact. Finally, double click on the Colour Correct node and look at its result. If you make an adjustment, only the region within the matte will be affected. And when you scrub the sequence, you can see how the matte generated by the object IDs isolates the colours as expected. So this is the typical application of object IDs in the batch flow graph. The second workflow using object IDs affects 3D selectives in action when using camera effects tools. This allows you to segment a 3D scene while working in action. Let's look at an example. Swipe back to batch and go back into the action node to look at the 3D composite. As a quick reminder, camera effects allow you to affect the result from the camera before leaving the action node. So for instance, select the camera in the action schematic. Go to the action node bin and switch to the Matchbox tab. Locate the Glow 3D Selective shader and drag it into the action schematic. So now the entire composite is glowing. If you wanted to isolate a section or object in the 3D composite, you would use a selective. Double click on the Glow 3D Selective for its controls. Change the menu to Selective. By default, the selectives are off, hence the whole output of the camera is glowing. When you click on the pull down menu, there are a range of options to pull a selective. With the exception of Object IDs, all the other options need to analyse the 3D scene and possibly manual animation is required for the selective. But when you choose Object ID, the selective already understands the 3D environment, making it easier to affect one or more objects in the 3D scene. So let's say we want to glow the text. Click Display Object ID. As before, click on the Colour Pot for the Colour Picker and ensure it is set to 16-bit float point. Click Pick and choose the middle text. Click OK. When you turn Display Object ID off, the middle word is glowing. If you just want to be sure what exactly is part of the selective, all selective shaders can show the selective viewing just to be sure. Now when you scrub the time bar, I want to point out that when the bottom text crosses over the word, the glow is obscured and the result is correct. So the Object ID understands 3D depth and occlusions. Just go ahead and pick the other two text objects in the 3D scene. Object IDs will work with any geometry you import into Action. This could be external or internal generated geometry and it can also be used with image objects. Each object will be given a unique ID number unless you are using instancing in the Action Schematic. Instances will always share the same object ID because they are generated off one object. Now all the Camera Effects Matchbox shaders have been updated to support the object IDs and if you code your own Matchbox shaders, you can update them to support object IDs as well. As a final reminder, whether you're using Object ID 3D Selectives in Action or the Matte Object Matchbox Shader in Batch, the Object ID data pass must be 16 or 32 bit for precision purposes. Furthermore, manipulating pixel data of an Object ID pass could cause unwanted results. So only use the Object IDs for its intended purpose. Lastly, the Object IDs are not limited to the ones generated by Action. You could import an Object ID pass from your favourite 3D application and isolate parts of your CGI composites using the Matchbox node. 
So that concludes isolating with object IDs and let us know how you get on. Be sure to check out the other features, workflows and updates to the Flame 2018 products. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel for future videos.